Hello everyone, TLSG here, back again with another daily Marvel Snap video. So today we have the new featured location, the Altar of Death. And in the Altar of Death, when you play a card here, you destroy it and you get plus two energy next turn. And so this is going to be like a ramp component. It's going to help you discount your death. It is going to help you get bigger cards out onto the board. But I urge everybody to build their decks around this location with caution. Featured locations occur in 40% of games, and while that is a much more increased chance than normal, there are still going to be a lot of games where this location does not come up. And you have to be able to have your deck function well, even outside of this featured location, to be able to successfully climb today. But we are going to cover my top decks and techs to try out while this location is featured. It should be an incredibly fun one, and I am looking forward to testing them out. So the first tech card is the Hood. He's going to ramp up your energy for that next turn. You get rid of his negative downside and you get the positive upside of having the one cost six power demon to follow up with. And then next we have Psylocke. Normally Psylocke is, she's okay. She gives you one additional energy, which if you drop her on curve on two, that's going to allow you to do a four cost drop on turn three. But with this location, if it is revealed by turn two and you play it into that location, then on turn three, you're going to be able to do a six cost card and so if you're one of the lucky few that has galactus and you're running it you can drop galactus on turn three and the opponent really doesn't have much chance to counter it unless maybe they happen to have cosmo in their hand at the right time and they guess the 50 50 of which location you're going to drop galactus at we have armor armor is going to be great at punishing those greedy players that really want to invest into this location you might be a killjoy, but it is effective. This is going to allow both of you to play cards into that location. I imagine it works the same way as Death's Domain. You should be able to protect the cards in that lane with something like an armor, and then they can no longer ramp, you can no longer ramp. But if they are anticipating being able to ramp consistently, you have countered a big portion of their game plan. We have one of my favorite variants and cards, Electro. The Electro ramp deck is going to be rampant today it is going to be able to be utilized so easily if the location occurs then electro will always have that location to play it because it will have revealed by turn three you can play it you can destroy electro similar to psylocke you're going to get the additional plus one from him every single turn but you're also going to get the plus two from destroying him while negating his negative downside just all upsides to electro today if you have him built into a good electro ramp core Depending on what you're seeing on the ladder, I think we're going to see a lot of Galactus today if you're very far in the ranks. And so Cosmo and Debris are going to be decent at blocking the opponent's location so that they can't push power there like they would want to. And then we have Jubilee. Jubilee is going to be fantastic at being able to be played there, normally at a four cost, unless your deck is really stacked with cards, unless you have a really big payoff from her, it's hard to justify dropping her at one power. But here, you're going to use that four energy for that turn. You're going to get the payoff of, of drawing into an additional card. She's going to get destroyed, and then you'll get two extra energy back that next turn. So really, she's a deck thinning card from pulling cards from your deck for two energy. Dropping power into that location is going to be a little bit difficult today. And so something like a Professor X lockdown should help you win that lane a little bit more consistently. And you could stop the opponent from being able to do any kind of ramps of their own. Similarly to the Professor X, Vision is going to be good. If you ramp into him early, you can move him over across the board, and he's going to be a really flexible resource for you to be able to make sure that you can find the best place to place him. And if you need that power push into the Altar of Death, you can move him over there without him being destroyed. When we saved one of the best for last, we have Death. Death is going to get a bonus every time a card is destroyed, and you're going to be able to easily guarantee that these cards are getting destroyed every single game. And so normally you want her stacked in a deck that is really built around destroying cards. With this location being featured, let it do the hard work for you. You can destroy your cards over there, get the additional energy, and then just continue to develop your board. And then I saved the best for last. We have Deadpool. Deadpool, when you draw him early, can be an absolute unit. You can play him onto the board. You can, If you can destroy him a few times, he becomes a very hard power presence to match. And especially whenever you build a deck that focuses around him and around that destruction tool, you can get some incredibly high high rolls. And with this location, you're going to be able to guarantee that not only do you destroy your Deadpool every turn, but you get two energy that following turn every single turn. And so you're going to be able to easily create very big, very big Deadpools and everything that goes along with that, which would be big Venoms, big Taskmasters. And overall, it's just going to be hard for the opponent to compete with how much power you're going to be able to place onto the board. 
All right, and so looking at the top deck recommendations to try out for today, the first one I have is a Deadpool Death Wave deck. Now, Deadpool is going to be phenomenal for today. If you need to, or if you need to push power into that location, you can always do something like an armor towards the end of the game. You can you can also drop your Bucky Barnes to get that guaranteed Winter Soldier in that lane, and then you can just ramp into the other locations fairly easily. If you need to, you can put in an Arnold Zola because you're going to have the additional energy. Every time you play Deadpool, you're going to ramp into more energy, so you can afford to have a little bit higher curve today, but you don't want to go too crazy because this location won't be there every single game. And so with the higher energy that we're going to have, we did slot in Moon Girl. Moon Girl is typically a very greedy, very, very greedy option, and it's usually pretty clunky to play because you have to choose between dropping Moon Girl and doubling down on your resources, or killing your Deadpool, or it becomes a trade-off of what you want to do and how you want to develop your power. But with the extra energy we'll have each turn, we can drop Moon Girl incredibly early. Then it's really flexible to continue to maneuver our power around the board. If we have two Deadpools that we're dropping each turn into the altar, then we're going to get plus four energy every single turn. And we're going to only be using two for those Deadpool. And so then you're going to be able to flood the rest of your resources very, very easily onto the rest of the board. I'm really looking forward to trying this deck out today. And I think it's going to be a phenomenal option. And the next list that I have is just a ramp deck. It ramps and wants to ramp into one of its powerful six cost drops, either in the Doctor Doom, the Magneto, the Leader, and then re-trigger those abilities again with Odin. And so if you drop the Doctor Doom, you can re-trigger that. That's going to be at least 10 power into the altar lane, um, which for some decks is going to be enough to win because it is pretty tricky to drop power into that location. This deck also utilizes being able to drop your arrow so that you can get it destroyed. You get the extra one energy every single turn. Plus you get the immediate plus two for that following turn and it's just going to be incredibly consistent for today and it's a really accessible list and has a lot of tech options to be able to make your opponent's plays a little bit more difficult than they would like for them to be. Next list that I have is a Jane Jaw, Jane Lockjaw rotation deck. You're going to be able to push power into the altar of death several ways. You can either drop your Jubilee into that location, that way you get that two energy refund, and you get a resource that is placed there. You can move a vision over, you can lean in on a Doctor Doom, and it's going to allow you to naturally drop some of your bigger resources onto the board, because you're going to be able to play some of your weaker cards like Mjolnir into the Altar of Death, and then that's going to surge your next turn. On turn four, you'll be able to do a six cost drop instead of some of your weaker cards, and so you'll more consistently be able to play some of these big resources onto the board. And as always, if the location does not turn up, this is still a very sound deck list, just overall, and it should perform well regardless of the locations. And then for those of you that do have Galactus, we have a Galactus ramp deck, and this one should be phenomenal for today. We're gonna be able to do some really big, powerful plays, if it comes down to it, we can lock down the Altar of Death with Professor X. If not, then we can do Galactus. We can push some of our high power plays into those other locations. If we ramp and we have more than five energy, so let's say we ramp with Psylocke on two and we have six energy, we could do Professor X and a one cost drop. So if somehow we already have our demon, then we could do both to do a nine power push into the location that we locked down rather than just the five. And so we get the added benefit of being able to sneak in some extra power with just a standard Professor X drop as well. We have the ideal play line of Galactus, but that's not our only win condition. We have Daredevil that will let us reasonably do a better turn five play. We could lock down a lane with Spider-Man into a Professor X. We have the Hobgoblins to clog up the opponent's two remaining spots because they're going to be focusing on playing into those two locations, most likely unless they're running something like an armor to, to switch the Altar of Death's location. And just overall, I think this will be an incredibly sound deck. If you don't have Galactus, then I recommend, if you're seeing it a lot, running either Arrow, Cosmo, or maybe even a Debris to make sure that the opponent can't drop Galactus for free. But those are my top decks and techs to try out for this featured location. What decks are you seeing that are working well? And which ones are not working so well? Did you take any of these ideas and tweak them into something that you feel like is a little bit better than what I recommended? If so, let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, this has been TLSG. Later, guys.